Okay, we're talking about solving systems of equations by substitution, and we just saw the basic approach. The approach is to solve one of the equations for one of the variables, and then plug that expression into the other equation. Now that actually gives us four possible ways to start a problem. Look at this system right here. I could solve this first equation for x, and then whatever I get for x, I could plug it in to the other equation right there. Or I could solve this one for y and plug an expression in there. Or I could start down here with this equation. I could solve this one for x and whatever I get for x, plug it in to the first equation. Or I could solve this one for y and plug it in there. So I could start with either equation and could solve it for either variable. Now one point I want to make here is that sometimes it helps just to take a minute and assess what you have because sometimes one of those four options is a lot easier than the others. Look at this. There's a coefficient on the x there. See the 2x? Same thing here. See the 5y? And down here, this, this has a, a negative 3 coefficient on the y. But the coefficient on this x is just a 1. That makes this equation pretty easy to solve for x. So that's a good place to start this particular problem. I'm going to solve this for x and then take what I get and plug it in to the other equation. Now solving this for x is pretty easy. You can probably just see that all I need to do is add 3y to each side and you can probably do that in your head but those will cancel out and I'll be left with x equals 3y minus 6. Now I need to take that expression for x and plug it into the other equation. So, and I think, I think it's helpful to show this step on the page. Let's write the other equation, 2x plus 5y equals 10. And then I like to actually, actually circle this and show the substitution. That's going to go in for x right there. So let's, let's rewrite this equation, but in place of x, write this expression, which is equal to x. So here we have 2 times x, but x is... 3y minus 6 plus 5y equals 10. Now one thing, don't make the mistake here of taking this expression for x and substituting it back into the same equation that it came from. That would be mathematically valid, but it wouldn't get you anywhere. If you solve this equation for x, then you need to substitute that into the other equation. Now when we do that, we see that x is gone. This x has been replaced with an expression in terms of y. So now instead of two equations with two variables, we now have one equation with one variable. And we can solve this with ordinary algebra. So let's do this. Let's distribute the 2 here. And this gives me 6y minus 12 plus 5y equals 10. OK, uh, let's. Uh, Let's add, add 12 to each side, okay, and uh, that cancels out. And here on the left we have 6y plus 5y, that's 11y, and on the right we have 22. Okay, 11y is 22, so you can see that y is equal to 2, and then we're almost done. Once we know y, now we need, just need to find x, and look at this x is 3y minus 6. We could take this value for y and plug it into one of these equations and do the algebra and solve for x. But the algebra to solve for x has already been done right there. So let's just plug in plug in y right there. Um, x is going to be 3 times 2 minus 6. So that's 6 minus 6. x is 0. And that's fine. 0 is a number. 0 is a valid answer. That's not the same thing as there being no solution. The solution is x is 0, y is 2. So you could write it like this, 0 comma 2. But that's our answer. That, that pair of x and y values satisfies both of those equations at the same time.